Welcome to the Cleveland Kibitz. This series follows me as we meet with Jewish Clevelanders from all walks of life, from business owners to religious leaders to nonprofit professionals serving our community. The Cleveland Kibitz is a conversation with some of Jewish Cleveland's most interesting personalities. My name is David Pearl. I'm a lifelong Clevelander with a passion for people and our remarkable Northeast Ohio Jewish community. This program is sponsored by Cleveland Jewish Funerals, Cleveland's only Jewish-owned and operated Jewish funeral home. Cleveland Jewish Funerals is committed to supporting Jewish life in Cleveland. To learn more about pre-planning, contact me, David Pearl. Pre-planning is an act of chesed, loving kindness, for those you leave behind. It's understandable to want to avoid this topic, but remember, it's not just about you. It's about those you leave behind. So contact me, David Pearl, at 216-340-1400. I'd be happy to sit down with you to explore your options. Well, hello everyone, and thanks for joining the Cleveland Kibitz. I'm your host, David Pearl. Today we're here with Rabbi Ephraim Nissenbaum and Rabbi Moish Stoll from the Jewish Learning Connection. And uh, we're going to delve right into it. Uh, we're just here to have a little kibitz and conversation. And uh, say hi. How are you guys doing? Thank you for having us today. My David. pleasure. How are you? Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Great. Um, so I'm just going to get right into it, get to the tachlis of it. Uh, please tell us a little a bit, what is the Jewish Learning Connection all about? We started the Jewish Learning Connection around 34 years ago. Um, it started originally we were in, in, in Cleveland Heights. Its purpose was to create an adult education center where Jews of all affiliations, with any background or no background whatsoever, could be able to find out a little bit more about their heritage. And our, our goal was to be able to create classes on different level and learning, learning programs one-on-one, -on -one, different types of programs, to be able to help people explore and grow with their knowledge and grow a little more exposure in their heritage. And then you, you are the uh, founder, correct? Right, correct. I, I found that together with a partner, Arya Burnham, in 1988. And Burnham made Aliyah in 1990, and everybody stole joined us at that time from Toronto. Got it. So from Toronto, huh? Correct, yes. yes. Been here. Actually, uh, yesterday was 32 years since, uh, since we moved here. Oh, mazel tov, mazel tov. Thank you. Very nice. So how do you, um, do each of you have the same role? Do you have different roles here? What do you... What do you? Uh, we uh, very similar roles. Uh, thank God we actually uh, complement each other in many ways. There are certain qualities that Rabbi Nismam has that I don't, and vice versa. Uh, our main function is yes, is the outreach and the classes and interacting with people, which is uh, what we do most of our time. Very good. Um, so, I guess to get a little bit of understanding, so Kiruv, you were saying that's bringing people. Closer? Outreach, outreach. outreach. Jewish outreach, basically getting people more involved in their Judaism, exploring right. their roots. Right. Unfortunately, I always say that one of the, one of the greatest travesties, I think, travesties of our times is the, in, the tremendous ignorance and apathy that's so common amongst the Jewish people. Many people simply have never had the opportunity of being able to study and to be able to see some of the classic Jewish sources inside or be able to really be able to have an opportunity to understand them, to study them. We try to fill that gap and try to be able to offer though anything people would be interested in learning or up to the challenge. We always say that. You know, thank God we have quite a few years under our belt of, of experience in our own yeshiva education. We want to be able to share it with everybody else too. That's very nice. I have a question. What inspired you, or both of you, I'll ask each of you this. What inspired you? You said you founded this 1988. You came along 1990. What inspired you to do this specific task? Like you're not a you're a teacher, but if you're not working for a day school, you're, this is a specific commitment, this key roof obligation. Yeah, when I grew up, my parents used to always have guests over the house on Shabbos. People, many non-religious Jews, that would sometimes have an opportunity to be able to share in the Shabbos experience. And I, I really, that really, it really clinched me something. I really, that really talked to me. When I later studied in Yeshiva in Chicago, there was an organization similar to Jewish Learning Connection called Migdal Torah, 
And uh, they, they used to ask me to teach over there. And I would teach there pretty often. When, when I was in the Kolo, I would give a class there on Sundays. And I really, really seemed to enjoy that. And then when I came to Cleveland, there was something like that here at the time. And I really wanted to be able to start something, a program like that too. And to be able to thank God, we've been quite successful over the course of 34 years. Hundreds of people have gone through our programs, including yourself, David, actually. Yes. Yes. And, and Ben also, for that matter. I will finish that soon, I promise. Uh, how, how about you, Rabbi Stahl? What inspired you? Yes, well, actually, uh, I was raised uh, not in a Shomer Shabbos family, but traditional. And when I was a teenager, our family started becoming more uh, observant. And um, all the way back in June of 79, when I was in yeshiva, somebody set me up to learn with uh, a few young men who did not come from a religious background. So even while I was in yeshiva for 11 years in Toronto, before I moved here, I was learning with people on a regular basis, uh, doing outreach while I was in yeshiva. So I had, and then a dear friend of mine uh, was uh, joined an outreach organization in Buffalo, New York, and we used to go visit them regularly. It's near Toronto. And I was very inspired by what they were doing. And actually, one of the rabbis in Buffalo knew Rabbi Nissenbaum, and he's the one who made the shidduch and set us up. So it seems, if I'm hearing both of you correctly, it just really seems like an, a passion from within has become something that you just love to do. Very much so. I feel very blessed being able to be able to do what we do. I just, uh, another question I was just thinking about. When... I was looking on a uh, line earlier and someone mentioned to me, uh, my friend mentioned that you have a podcast yeah. now or something. Can you tell me, tell us a little bit about this podcast? I mean, we started it recently, a couple of months ago, an opportunity for people that may not be interested or come or able to come to classes, physically speaking, to be able to, I mean, the podcast has become a new way of, a new means of communication, obviously. So I have a little short little podcast every week, two of them actually one on the weekly Torah portion, one on interesting facts in Jewish law. And it, it just approximately between it's around 15, 20 minutes. The, the, the first podcast, the second one's a little bit shorter, around between 5 and 10 minutes. And again, it's an opportunity. It, it's, the podcast opens up new vistas that we didn't realize were possible before. I mean, it's, I listen to about 100 people a week right now, thank God. And it's, it, it's growing. So I mean, it's, we, always, we always felt that anything we can possibly do to be able to spread the ideas and to share we're open to. How would someone find the podcast? It's it's on all. I mean, Spotify. I guess, it's on Spotify. It's on Apple and a lot of the Got different it. other different things, uh, different types like of vehicles. Jewish it's learning called, connection. It's called. It's just called. We call the Torah podcast. It's the called. Torah podcast. Yeah, by Friday, That's a good name. I guess so. I'd like to add that uh, just uh, about four years ago, uh, Rabbi Nissimam's son Yossi joined us. And he started a couple of new programs. We figured we should get some young blood in here. Uh, and old blood. <laughs> and old blood, yeah, right. And uh, he started a couple of new programs. We have a retirees uh, class every morning. Uh, that's for men from 9.15 till 10.45. Right, two, two classes, yes. And, uh, and then in the evening here, um, Sunday through Thursday, we have a, a night kolel. I mean, people come and study with individuals one-on-one. -on -one. And those are two brand new programs that we started. So we always have been trying to grow and come up with new ideas. Uh, it should be mentioned that our classes are for ladies, as most of the classes are for ladies as well. Um, a lot of mixed classes, and we have some, some just individual ladies' classes. We have a whole array of uh, different opportunities. We also do a lot of one-on-one -on -one learning with men. Uh, that uh, both Rabbi Nisimam and I have many private uh, sessions every week. Well, I think it's wonderful because you have the group settings, the group classes, and now the one-on-one -on -one classes I like. And I also really admire and appreciate how you reach out to everyone, from observant Orthodox to not so observant across the spectrum to listen and explore our roots and learn more about our heritage. I really appreciate that. Thank you. So that uh, concludes our session today, our little Cleveland kibitz uh, with Rabbi Nissenbaum and Rabbi Stoll. Really thank you for allowing us to be here and uh, appreciate what you do for our Cleveland community. Thank you very much. Thank you.